dispenser. So an automated dispenser honestly has been done before. I'll talk a bit more about it. Uh, main team members did really just two people, me and the guy who prefers to be known as Sam. He has a he's a shy guy, let's just say it that way. Okay, so well the there's a lot of steps involved in this path to madness. And you can get the slides here and you can get the code there. It's a GitHub link, blah, blah, blah. And yes, as I said, this is not a new project. If you have been like following YouTube, you know, Sexy Cyborg has built her own uh, automated dispenser and that pretty much inspired this particular project. Now, unlike Sexy Cyborg's dispenser, which includes conveyor belts and the whole She's very, we just very simply focus on one aspect, which is the dispensing itself, you know. So, the dispensing, without further ado, I will let M actually explain it. So, yes. Oh. Refilling. Once it's fully refilled, there's no leak, no even how much you play with it. Now, once you dump, it's just gonna dump one shot. That's it. Done. Then it's gonna refill again. Okay, so yeah, um, it's a pretty simple mechanic, you know, it just depresses the valve, it releases the shot, let go, it refuses the shot, and then you can depress the valve again. So, that's really so, so yeah, so we started with very quick prototype, we built the pumps to depress it, so normally you would take the cup and just depress it, so instead we have the pump to depress it instead, and we tried it out with a digital power supply. And we got for the dual. Cost is nice. Yeah, we were lucky on the very first try. So this guy, see? Now uh, open on here, look at me up here. See, it's not breaking it. It's pushing it just nice. So yeah, button the shaky camera because I was the cameraman, yes. Yeah, and shaky hands, you know, comes with the territory. So, uh, okay. So what you see is actually literally this particular motor. So this is actually a 12 volt motor, if I remember correctly, that we salvaged from somewhere. I still have no idea how we managed to find it, but we did find it. And one thing that you notice about this, and if you look at the code, is that we took a lot of pains and efforts trying to make sure this thing did not break this thing, the plastic valve itself. Because sadly, after we did this uh, beautiful first try, you know, everything was perfect. The second time we did it, we broke the valve. Oops. Luckily, we still had four more to go with. You know? So, yes. So, now, what if we make some controls? I mean, we've got the motor, it works, you know, wow, yay. Student project done already, yay. So, in this case, the theory is very simple. Your DC motor literally works off polarity to change the direction. So, if you apply polarity, it will spin clockwise, you apply it. the reverse polarity, it will spin anti clockwise, you know? So, this GIF is just to highlight that um, theory. So, what we had is that we had a uh, VMOS and we started plugging in the motor controls in two channels. And then, after that, through the motor driver, the H bridge motor driver, and then we had the VMOS to control how you want the polarity to change. And the code, very simple. As I said, it's really, really very simple. In fact, that's why we had the first talk, you know? We get you eased in and then did the thing when you really hard. Okay? So, this, if you have been doing working with Arduino code, you should be familiar with this. So, we started by uh, setting up our motor pins so that if we ever have changed, it's easier, okay? Rather than hunting through for all your post code. Uh, so, sorry, magic numbers. So, the code is very simple. Digital right, digital right, apply high, low. Then when you want to stop, low, low, so you, you kill the entire motion. Then you want to reverse direction, high, low, you know, reverse it, then same thing, you know, stop. So this was what we did for the very first prototype. And if you go into the GitHub page, you know, that link earlier, you'll notice that our code is a bit different. We started working with uh, what uh, if uh, loop. So what we did was that we actually slowed the motor down by making it move in micro steps. Because, yeah, we broke the valve. So that's where one of the differences between the code. So when you look at the code, you'll notice that it's different from what you see on the slides. Don't worry. 
Hopefully, you can figure out what the differences are. Okay. So now, so that was our second step in our path of maintenance. We have actually made ourselves nice, good controls that work only if you know the magic code, right? You know, you run the code and then you trigger it. So how about if we make the trigger completely wireless, you know, by actually having it over <coughs> HTTP, you know? So in short, if we can trigger it over the internet. And in this case, for a lot, BMOS, beautiful thing is that it comes include it comes included with an ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. <coughs> So, 8266 Wi-Fi module means that it's Wi-Fi ready. Yeah. You know, don't need to go buy another shield for your extremely expensive Arduino board. It can't be really enough. So, how to uh, trigger and set up your Wi-Fi? Basically, you need to include this, well, three libraries with a fourth library that we would recommend, but it comes with a lot of headaches. So, the first three are what you need to actually set up the module itself. And the last one is what we call Arduino OTA over the air, OTSS for over the air. It allows you to actually update the code in your controller without having to plug it in through your USB cable. But anyway, no worries. Um, I'll provide some links as well to, for those who are interested in digging further in at, at the end of the presentation. So initial code to get started, right, if you see there is actually boilerplate code ready to copy and paste link right here, okay? Or you can just type out this entire long long string, okay? But, okay, anyway, theory-wise for the Wi-Fi is that we are going to build a Wi-Fi server and it's actually going to host a web page. And on the web page, it's going to contain a button, a button to trigger the dispensing. So, in short, you have created pretty simplified IoT solution, you know, where you press a button and something happens. Yeah, so this <coughs> code can be re apply for whatever you want to do, okay? So, in this case, when you look through the code, if you're lost, there are two things you just need to know. There are two key parts. One is that there is the part where we actually initialize the server. So, Wi-Fi server, server, and AT is actually the default port that you open up for your Wi-Fi server. And the second part will be the code itself. So, the code falls all within this sub-function called void Wi-Fi server. So, code and sub-functions code here. Now, specifically for this um, dispenser, there is actually one way that we did the trigger condition. Basically, every time you click a button, it actually loads a page that includes a, pen, a, a string of text. The string of text is dispense equals start. And what happens every time you run the code is that it always checks for all the text within the string and it checks for this particular string itself. If this string exists, it will start the dispensing function. Simple? Okay. Right. So, yeah, HTML code, literally, it's built through the Wi-Fi server. It's actually within that void Wi-Fi server. It's entirely print in HTML code, then print it, you know, line by line, literally hard-coded website. And, yeah, the triggers, essentially, you'll see that there are two triggers. One is a hypertext, and the other is an actual button, a form button which you will see very soon. And yeah, based on that, yeah, we, oh sorry, I over jumped. So based on that, I just show you the website itself. So oh, where's my website? Ah, there you go. So, how do we get to this point? So, ah, oops, suddenly I lost my page. How do we get to this point? So first thing first is that I need to give it Wi-Fi. So if you go in uh, our, Venue sponsors have given us a very beautiful password, WWGAS, and do the hustle. Beautiful. Uh, so, internet, and I created myself my hotspot. And with the hotspot, you'll notice that it's already connected. And in this case, this particular uh, connection, the network name and the password is within the Arduino code. That means it, there is actually, you'll see two initialized variables asking for what is the SSID and what is the password. Because when it tries to connect, it will need this. Again, this is all part of the initial code from earlier in the links. But yeah, I'm just explaining a bit because 
Honestly, it gave me a lot of trouble trying to figure out what people were saying when they were writing it. And yeah, and from here you can see the IP address, and you can see this is the IP address. And hopefully this works this time around. So I'm just going to click the link. So yeah, thank goodness. Probability saved us. Okay, so this is our third step in our great uh, journey of madness. Now let's go one more step. So you've got a website, you know, and you can click buttons on it. Yeah, so you can build a website and all your IT applications on it. Okay? Let's go with voice. So number one thing, there are two ways you can do um, applets. There is a TFTT, if I can correctly. No, if you click this, ah, come on, it's a very long string of text. Another way is that you could use Google Assistant. So this one is going to show you how you can do it through Google Assistant. So first thing first, uh, I'm giving you the reference itself. This is the creating shortcut commands. So what are we actually going to be doing? So yeah, specific, this is literally copied from the website. How to create a shortcut command using Google Assistant. So, I'm not going to um, belabor this particular point. Uh, go through the tutorial, it's beautiful. And so what happens is that when you do Google Assistant, sorry, when you do Google Assistant, what they will ask you to compute first for your voice clip. So you know you need to tell it something. This is the voice command to trigger the code. And then afterwards, they will need you to tell it what particular command you want it to, to achieve. So in this case, what we did was that we told it to go to this particular website, you know, the, the IP address, 192.168, and then after that, slash, dispense equals start. So immediately, you have triggered the command right away. And just to give you an example, because my phone is too old to actually support Google Assistant, I have to give you this beautiful pre-rendered video. Like the water, so... <laughs> so yes, no. Yeah. Okay. So that literally marks the end of this particular part of the madness. And for those who are really, really curious, there are actually a couple of links as well, including like you know, getting started with Remos, OTA, because that gave us a lot of trouble. And lastly, the full documentation as well for those who really want to follow us through this rabbit hole. And with that, thank you very much. Okay.